Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Monday, January 13th, 2020. Please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is a reading dated for the, the 13th of December, wow, okay. The 13th of January, it doesn't mean it has to resonate exactly at that time. It can resonate whenever you are guided to watch this reading, yeah? Um, also keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, I hope you guys had a, a good weekend. I had a good weekend, um, but all I really did was, I literally stayed in my apartment all weekend and played video games. <laughs> like, I didn't wanna go out and, and it's funny because there was a possibility that I was going to hang out with a friend, but, um, you know, that actually never happened. And it was okay because when I got to the weekend, I was just like, you know what, I really, I really don't even want to do anything. I just kind of want to stay at home. Um, the weekend has kind of become uh, a, a moment for me to like literally do nothing because I do so much throughout the week. It's like, when Saturday and Sunday comes, it's just like, you know what? I'm just going to chill. I'm going to do whatever, exactly what it is I want to do. And that's stay at home, watch TV, play video games, and eat pizza. <laughs> so that was my weekend. Um, but I hope you guys had a good weekend. We did have that full moon on the 10th, which was Friday, uh, partial lunar eclipse. Um, so part of the reason why I kind of wanted to stay home was because I didn't necessarily want to be out and about with all the the tomfoolery that could have ensued. So I hope you guys had a good weekend um, and that you didn't get caught up in too much drama and that it was t too much of a, a, an upheaval or an uproar of a weekend, yes? Um, I did get news of um, one of my best friends losing her mother, which is very sad. So prayers to her. Um, if you guys would like to send prayers, uh, that would be greatly appreciated for my friend, one of my best friends who has, in fact, you know, her mom, her mother passed. It was very sudden, too. So prayers go out to them and their family. Thank you so much. Um, so, okay. So getting into today's energy... As I sat down, well, first of all, I'm getting a really late start today. I normally like to start around, like, start recording around 7.30 a.m., but it is 8 o'clock right now, and I'm I'm just realizing that. Now, I didn't get up any later today. I guess I was just moving really slow, which makes a lot of sense. <laughs> today was a little, this morning was a little bit of a rough one emotionally, and I really feel like that's what's tying into what we're, what we're what, what's going on here, because as I sat down to, um, to, to, to start channeling the, the, the energy, <laughs> I was going to say the emotional energies or the energies of the collective. I wanted to say December and I just did even like in the beginning here, I, I almost actually, I almost said November this time, but then I caught myself and tried to say January, but I said December instead. So what I feel like is happening right now is a processing or we'll say yes. That's right. The integration process of something that was activated back in December, it could have even been activated back in November for you. Now, me personally, I know I went through an activation around the um, uh, the the solar eclipse, which was Christmas Day, January 25th. Not, geez, Eric, I have got all of my... I've got my dates all mixed up, you guys, but it was December 25th was the actual activation. On December 24th was when Christmas Eve was when I posted, as many of you know, all you all know by now, um, whether you've seen it or not, you've either seen it or you've heard me talk about it. But I posted a, a, a message to my twin flame, um, basically telling him, telling the world that I still love him and... Um, I'm extremely grateful for everything that this path has taught me. And that was a major, that was a major thing for me because for this whole past year leading up to that point, I had been in strong resistance mode. I had this mask on 
that, you know, I didn't necessarily believe or that, you know, it wasn't going to happen and I was done with it and I don't ever have to worry about it anymore because I learned the lesson. Now I can move on, blah, blah, blah. And that was all just a front. It literally all was a front. And by the time I got to, by the time I got to, to the holiday season, specifically though, specifically Christmas, um, was when I finally let go and decided to allow my feelings to come forward and admit to myself what I was truly feeling. Um, and that I, and, but then also that I'm, that I'm grateful for it, that I am very, very grateful for everything that I've dealt with you know, and everything that I've learned. And so now it's like that energy is coming back up. So for me personally, that activation happened in, in during right around the solar eclipse in which a lot of things were going to be activated. And then we get to the full moon or the partial lunar eclipse here following that solar eclipse, where now we're in a process of integrating that which has been activated, right? Okay, well, um, so pre-shuffle energies here we have the four of wands the three of wands the three of pentacles and also the eight of cups wanted to come out at the very end overall energy we do have the five of swords with oh wow oh my god okay well with death death was the original one but it's this side of the card where it's the rebirth and then you have the knight of pentacles all right so what I was getting originally with these energies, just from the pre, just from the overall energy here, you guys, is we have a rebirth that is kind of like an against all odds type of energy. It's literally like you are like some you or someone you're connected to, whatnot, whatever. But I'm gonna I'm just gonna speak to whomever it is that would be resonating with this. Okay, so I'm just gonna say you. All right. So if this is not you, then don't worry about it then maybe this just isn't the message for you. Although I highly, I, I, I invite you to stay with us, hang out with us for this probably next hour. <laughs> but um, it could be someone you're connected to as well, okay? Anyway, it feels like you, this person that I'm channeling for here, or this person that this message is for, it's like you are clawing your, your way out of this. Like you are fighting tooth and nail. <laughs> I'm laughing because I said that. I feel like I said that sometime last week. But anyway, you're literally fighting. You're clawing your way out of some sort of ditch that you may find yourself in, or maybe even out of a <laughs> maybe even out of a grave, right? Because that's kind of what I'm seeing with this death. But it's the rebirth part of the card. But then you have the Knight of Pentacles, which is at the bottom of the deck and overall energy and. This is kind of coming through. I know I feel it this way. It's kind of reassurance for me. So I want to, I'm not, I'm definitely going to give you guys this message, but there's reassurance here that things are happening, whether you, whether you see it on the surface or not. Okay. This is a slow and steady situation. This is very much an energy in which it's like someone is emerging from a cocoon, right? Like they were a caterpillar, they they went through their whole chrysalis phase and now they're emerging from the cocoon as a butterfly. But you can't rush a butterfly. Like the butterfly has to, first of all, break free from the cocoon before it can do anything else, right? And that's kind of what I'm seeing with this death and five of swords, knight of pentacles energy. It's like you're literally fighting your way out of this cocoon. But then even once the butterfly comes out of the cocoon, initially, it can't just like fly away and be done with it. No, it's got to rest for a second. It's got to let the blood flow move through its wings. Its wings have to dry also. you got to get the blood flowing through the wings and then you've got to let the wings dry so that they can carry the butterfly, right? So there's, it, it takes some time. This is not something that's just going to happen overnight. If you are struggling with this, please, please, please do not hesitate to ask your angels and your spirit guides for help, God, source, creator, whatnot, whatever. Just please, please ask for help. They're saying we are wanting to hand, we are wanting to help you. We are standing by ready to go as soon as you ask for the help. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, Getting to the cards on the table here, outside of the overall energy, we have the four of wands, and I will, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie, spirit. The, the as soon as I saw this card, spirits mention union, marriage, commitment, stability, all of that good stuff. Okay, um, 
<clears throat> okay, fine. But maybe, I mean, okay. I was going to say maybe they just said that just because that's something that I'm, I'm kind of like oversensitive to and in a good way. It's like I'm hypersensitive because I want it. I, I really want that again. But um, they're saying that's not just a message for you, Eric. That's a message for the collective because you're not the only one that wants this. Thank God. <laughs> Okay, but also keep in mind that this Four of Wands, yes, this Four of Wands is a union energy, okay? It does represent, if you're on a twin flame journey, it can represent twin flame union. I'm not trying to get your hopes up. I'm not trying to say it's going to happen anytime soon, but this is kind of what we're all working on, for sure, okay? So so ultimately, it's on its way. It's coming. But also, this Four of Wands can represent stability within yourself, spiritual sp stability. I do see this as a card or, of representing spiritual foundation, maybe even a union of masculine and feminine within that's allowing you to have some sort of greater stability, greater foundation. Um, and this really doesn't feel like, this doesn't feel like extreme or or lots of physical opulence or um or luxury and all that but it does feel like being solid stable and secure and content and happy and grateful for what it is that you do have no matter what it may look like and just being grateful for it and moving forward in that energy from there like in, in whatnot and so thus we get to the three of wands which is an energy of being on the right path um moving forward Maybe even return, making return on an investment, but I really see it, especially since it's coupled with the three of pentacles here. I see this as you continuing to move forward with the momentum that you have already generated so far, okay? So there's definitely an energy of keeping the ball rolling, not just getting the ball rolling, but keeping the ball rolling. I'm also getting a strong energy from this three of wands of a masculine energy um looking forward towards the future having found a greater balance within him or herself this could be someone that's this is definitely masculine energy so it's either the masculine energy within you or it's you as a masculine counterpart if you resonate with that um but i just i get a very strong feeling of having a vision for the future um <laughs> hashtag 2020 vision right <laughs> but having a vision for the future and the coupled with the three of pentacles it is it is representing two different two things but that are happening at the same time one being in being in this process of self mastery to work on yourself to better yourself so that you can you can better provide or you can better align with this vision of the future but also having your sights set on someone in the external someone external to you in which you want to have a partnership with in which you want to have either a business partnership or maybe even a romantic union with. Oh, I don't mean to cover his face here, but I'm just with the four of wands energy. And actually it's kind of perfect that the four of wands would, uh, like that I'm putting it right here, behind this three of wands individual with the emperor right here, because it feels like this four of wands energy is what's giving you this fortification, this wherewithal, the, the, the stability, the even the excitement, the exuberance, the... Um, the wherewithal, the vision, the, there's a specific word that I'm looking for. <clears throat> the drive, the gumption, the excitement. There's a, there's, a, there's a specific word that those are all synonyms for, but it's just, just one word that's just escaping me. But it's giving you the passion, the drive, the excitement, the willpower, the inspiration to move forward in this way. It's, this is like, this is your... It's like this is your powerhouse, okay? This is your energy source. This is the, your f the fuel for your fire, something like that, okay? And then we do have the Eight of Cups. Now, the Eight of Cups is giving me actually a really good vibe here. It is kind of speaking to walking away from certain things, leaving certain elements from the past behind, but it's also getting back to your inner child something that your inner child really truly desires or something that is has been a desire of yours maybe since you were a little kid or now that you have gotten into the process of healing your inner child working with your inner, inner child aligning with your inner child it's like something that you are moving towards is going to bring some satisfaction to your inner child that 
I just feel like very strongly that this could have been something that you've been really, really, really wanting for a very, very long time. Something that you wanted ever since you were a kid, something, a desire that was instilled within you as you experienced childhood. So maybe it wasn't something that you directly wanted, but circum... I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that's kind of rude going on outside anyway certain elements of your childhood have developed this this, this deep strong desire within you and it's almost as if the, your inner child has been sitting here just staring at these eight neatly stacked cups like gosh you know what i i might not have all this but what i really want is that that last those last two cups now those last two cups could be anything it could be a certain career path it could be a certain life element it also could be that relationship that marriage that union that 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 love whatever it could be anything but i do see it coming okay especially with this shooting star here it's like it's it's almost like it's about to happen very quickly very swiftly very strongly okay Okay, but also with all that said, tying it back into what I was saying in the beginning, that does have a lot to do with whatever was activated back in December, maybe even in November for you. I know when I think about it, when I think about it, I will say that November probably was really the start of it, the start of that activation for me. I mean, like I, I was... I was feeling very strongly that the holiday season was going to be very important, very significant for me. I didn't know why. Um, I was feeling it over the summer and I felt like, you know, maybe I was going to have a partner at that time or blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. Cause I was just getting that whole like, that like lovey dovey holiday season type vibe. And then, I mean, a physical partner didn't actually like manifest in my life, but that's when right around it was we came into november we got up to like thanksgiving and it was like okay and then the day after thanksgiving something happened and i was like huh okay something really synchronistic happened and i was like okay spirit <clears throat> and that's kind of when you know i started to allow myself to soften and then by the time <laughs> by by the time christmas came it was just like i couldn't I couldn't hide it anymore. I couldn't stand it anymore. It all just kind of came flooding out. And that's when I posted that thing to my twin flame. So think back on what your life was like, what was going on through you, what a spirit just said, whatever, what activations you were experiencing back. It could even go so back so far as to August, you guys. But I really do feel like, and especially since I wanted to say December and I had to stop myself a number of times before I even got to the video, December was a really important time for whatever is happening in your life right now, okay? All right. And don't worry if you're watching this reading months later on down the road, it, it doesn't matter. It could have been December 2019 that was a really important time for you, or you had that activation at a different time, but now you're resonating with this reading because basically this is what it means for you, okay? All right, cool. I'm going to give this one more shuffle and then we'll see what we've got. Cool. And yes, I am drinking coffee today just because I wanted coffee. <laughs> mm. Mm. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Monday. I almost did it again, you guys, for our Monday, January 13th, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, they're telling me to do five shuffles. So I'm gonna do five shuffles. So, um, and while I do that, I'm gonna tell you a story. One. So when I woke up this morning, I had the song, Where Are You Now? Two, by Janet Jackson in my head. And it's off the Janet album. 
three, I had a moment. I think it was Friday. I can't remember when. It was either Thursday or Friday, but it was a moment where... Actually, yeah, I think it was Friday. This is four. Where um, I broke down because that album is so relevant to my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> and this whole journey that I'm on, like this whole twin flame situation and whatnot. And so, four. So when I woke up with that song in my head this morning, it was extra hard because um, I recommend that you guys listen to it. It's called, Where Are You? Where, where are you now? Now that I'm ready to ready to love you the way you love me babe <laughs> I, that wasn't i didn't do that justice but it's a great song it's a really great song five and when i woke up with that in my head this morning it was hard because i'm not trying to get caught up in this again i'm, I'm really trying to stay focused and do whatever it is i need to do for my life and you know, and, and work on the channel and, and, and study and do all this stuff that it's just, it's hard. It's really hard to have to be, to have all of that stuff just come through automatically and really not be able to do much about it, <laughs> you know? So I'm right there with you guys. I mean, you know that by now, but anyway. If, I highly recommend that you listen to that song. It's a really beautiful song. And it's a great album, too. Janet. Janet Jackson. 1990s. I mean, what? Hey, what What? Else? <laughs> what can I say? It was a great time for music, that's for sure. <sighs> okay. All right. January 13th, 2020. What do you got for us today, Spirit? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm humming. <laughs> okay. Uh, Monday, January 13th, 2020. 2020, 2020, 2020. Really? Wow. Okay. Well, we're just going to shuffle till we get something. I am seeing purple for the collective today. I, I really do feel like there are a lot of downloads that are coming through that are happening. Um, I've been getting a lot of downloads lately. I mean, and I, you know, part of the reason why I feel like I was just in such a mode to just stay at home and do nothing but like play video games and watch TV all weekend is because there was a lot happening. I, m there were moments where my ears were just ringing nonstop. It was like there was so much going, coming through. There was so many downloads that were happening for me, at least. I don't know about you guys, but like I needed to be in just, I needed to be as receptive as possible. Okay. So let me give this one more shuffle. So I don't know how you guys, um, what happened with you guys, but that was going on for me. Like it's been, ha my ears have not, have, and it's funny because I haven't been getting this much ringing a lot lately, but now all of a sudden activations are happening. Downloads are coming. All right, we're going to stop there. Wow. Okay. We have overall energy of the Knight of Wands on the other side of the card or the deck is the three of wands again. All right. So it's like someone is gearing up to take some sort of action here. Um, wow. Wow. Oh my God. Is that the nine of wands or judgment? That's the nine of wands. Okay. All right, guys. So here's what I'm getting with this. Um, so there's some sort of action that wants to be taken here. And what I'm seeing with the Knight of Wands energy is it's, uh, what I just heard is I'm seeing the light. That's what I just heard with the Knight of Wands. I'm seeing the light. I'm following my, ins I'm following the inspiration. The biggest thing that I'm getting with this though is um, with the, with the magician in, and the two of swords, both in reverse and the fool upright, but also with the 10 of pentacles, but with the fool upright specifically, like these three cards right here, Someone is taking their hands off the wheel in a certain extent or a certain way. It's like someone is deciding to let the universe guide them instead of trying to be in control all the time. 
There was an energy of being indecisive or not wanting to move forward because there was a lack of control or, um, yeah, there was like an overly domineering energy, overly dominant energy involved here. And what you really, what you really needed to do was allow the universe to guide you and to take the steps that you needed to take. And now it kind of feels like somebody really, truly is learning to have faith. The Ten of Pentacles here, okay? This Ten of Pentacles does represent wisdom. It represents uh, experience. It represents longevity. It represents family, legacy, um, career. What I'm getting with this side of the Ten of Pentacles is someone here is really has come to a really a strong state of wisdom and um, has learned the lesson in trusting the universe. I just heard letting go. Not letting go of the need to be in control, understanding the value of allowing the universe to guide you, allowing yourself to relinquish some control. It's almost as if with this Knight of Wands energy, what I'm seeing here is some, you or someone, someone here is looking for the signs and allowing the signs to guide them it's like you're ready to go you're ready to take action you're ready to move in a certain direction you're just waiting for inspiration to strike you're waiting for the ideas to come to you hmm. i just get an energy that you're very much going with the flow here oh shit <laughs> I wanted to see what was because I was interested because we have we have the nine of wands here underneath the um, the knight of wands, which is an energy of feeling battered and bruised. This is almost an energy of surrender. This is almost an energy of surrender here, you guys, with this knight of wands. It's like it's like you or whomever is resonating with this reading, whoever this reading is for, it's like you've been fighting, again, tooth and nail to, <laughs> to, um, to procure some sort of control over how things happen or the, the direction that you move in or how you, uh, the, 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 the actions you wanted some sort of you wanted some sort of sense of control in terms of the actions that you take or the way something played out and you had been fighting this over and over for the longest time but it's almost as if now there's some sort of energy that has humbled you here that's what i'm also getting with this lightning strike there is an energy that has humbled somebody here a little bit and now it's like all right fine okay fine i'll do this the way you say and it's not about being subordinate it's just about saying recognizing that the universe knows how to handle this much better than your conscious and ego mind does so there is an element of relinquishing some sort of control it's not like you're you're releasing all forms of control because you are still the individual that is in the position to need to take some sort of action okay that action is purely solely on you so you are, you do have a level of control here, but there are higher forces that are guiding you. And it's funny because I was seeing that purple color as I was starting to channel for the collective while I was shuffling and all that. And with the download and that, which, which prompted me to, to say, to speak on, you know, all the downloads that I was getting over the weekend. So I really do feel like if, if this was like over the past weekend for you guys, or whenever this time period resonates for you, there have been a lot of downloads that have come through that have allowed you to put yourself in, in less of a driver's seat, more of the co-pilot, you know, the second in command, whereas the universe is fully in the driver's seat here. Okay. Or even you could say your higher self, which is the universe is in the driver's seat here. And that's kind of where I'm getting this lightning bolt is kind of like a, a strike of humbleness. <laughs> okay. But then you have the three of wands here and underneath the three of wands is none other than that King of cups that just keeps has been coming out a lot lately. There is definitely, they're saying it's the masculine, whether it's the masculine energy within you or maybe a divine masculine counterpart, but 
either way, however it resonates, there is definitely an energy of emotional maturity. And with that, I'm hearing divine security. Your heart is protected here. Okay, you can, and I, ah, maybe that's what someone has come to realize. You are a child of the divine. You are in fact protected. Your heart is protected. The more you live with an open heart, the more the universe is going to conspire alongside you to protect your heart. As long as you are in an energy of honor, of knowing your worth and knowing your truth and, and, and honoring that. As long as there is nothing there, you have no belief systems in the way of the universe protecting you in the form of maybe believing that you are not lovable, you're not good enough, that emotion makes you weak, love makes you weak, which would then be elements of patriarchal indoctrination. As long as you keep that out of the way, the universe will in fact protect you. And I really feel like that's what someone has come to terms with. That's what maybe what you have come to terms with. Maybe that's why you've been so indecisive here, or maybe so in denial, or maybe so 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 much in an energy of just trying to control everything with the magician because you didn't want to get hurt. You didn't want to get your heart broken. But there's been some sort of realization here for you or whomever I'm channeling for, where it's like, no, you don't have to protect yourself so much because the universe is gonna protect you. As long as you allow the universe to do so, as long as you don't have any sort of belief systems, thought patterns, blockages, whatnot, whatever, that keeps the universe from protecting you, okay? That is beautiful, you guys. That really is beautiful. I want to get into some clarification now and i definitely want to start with clarifying the the magician in reverse and the two of swords in reverse but i really feel like i need to put the ten of pentacles upright with this because this ten of pentacles is speaking of a lesson learned here a change in i want to say a change in affiliation a change in um a change in loyalty in a way, but this is mentally, this feels like in your thought patterns, okay? It's like you're leaving one school of thought behind and you're moving into one another school of thought that's centered in faith in the universe in, and faith in what you feel is what I just heard, all right? So let's get some clarity on this, please. Let's, let's dive a little deeper into these energies and see what this really represents for you here the magician i keep i keep wanting to say the ace of wands the magician two of swords both in reverse the ten of pentacles upright now i'm seeing the ace of wands in the magician we'll see if that comes out in this clarifier here but it's like you were inspired towards going towards something something that has tr real and true value toward for you and your heart real true value to your heart but you were being too stubborn you were being maybe in some cases you were being too hasty also maybe in some cases you were being too rigid or too controlling you have got to let the universe take the wheel here and that's what you're figuring out okay we're gonna we're gonna get this let's see what this is a little deeper into these energies please spirit Ah, ha, ha. Well, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so we have the Three of Swords with the Four of Cups. And we have... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Overall energy is the Ten of Swords. The Ten of Swords. Now, here's the interesting part about this, you guys. When these came out, I thought they were kind of reversed, but I turned them upright, okay? And then this card came out, and I thought it was reversed, so I turned it upright, and it's the Emperor. But, but I turned it so that the Emperor, the Emperor is in reverse right now, but he doesn't need to be. And what I really want to do, what I really want to do is turn this around. 
So what I'm really feeling here, because because originally when these came out, I was like, N no, I, f I feel like these. Okay, okay, well I guess these are reversed. It's the Three of Swords with the Four of Cups. All right, so let's let's look at it the way that it came out. Let's look at it the way that it came out. The Three of Swords upright, Four of Swords. Uh, I'm sorry, not the Four of Swords. The Four of Cups upright, and the Emperor in reverse. Oh, by the way, we do have the Emperor's counterpart here in the Empress, but we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> okay, so. It feels like the masculine here, we could be talking about divine counterparts. Again, guys, uh, I'm not going to apologize for doing, for, for channeling this message any longer. There's no reason for me to apologize for it. I know none of you are complaining, but I'm, I've been, I've feeling, I guess that's from my own, my own past with the situation, but these messages are going to keep coming out. I am a channeler for this type of thing. It doesn't have to be this way. If it doesn't resonate with you, then if it resonates and it resonates in a different way, then please, by all means, take it. I do not intend for these readings to be just for the Twin Flame or Divine Counterpart Collective. I intend for these readings to be everybody. However, I do have a lot of viewers and followers and subscribers along those paths. So that's what's going to come out here. Okay, moving forward. The masculine is feeling a little out of sorts, has been feeling a little out of sorts here. Okay, because of an energy, because of energies of, um, oops, because of energies of rejection and unrequited love uh, and heartbreak that has created, that has been created because of that. So what I'm feeling is this is from the past, okay? This is when potentially the Empress here was showing up doing the absolute most, <laughs> the absolute most to get this Emperor's attention to get the masculine's attention, and he or she vehemently disregarded her, pushed her to the side, him or her, it doesn't matter, we're talking energies, not gender, um, completely rejected her, uh, threw her out, um, blocked her, all, whatever, whatever, whatever happened between the two of you, okay? But now the masculine is caught up in that. And because of this energy, because of what he put forward in the past, he doesn't, he or she doesn't feel like, or didn't, didn't feel like he could come for, he or she could come forward. Now, and this has been something that's been, that we channeled for the collective a few months ago. Oh, where is it? Oh, here it is. I was like, I don't have Natalie's necklace on. There it is. Um, Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> he didn't feel, he, oh, okay, so now, now what I'm getting for the masculine energies is you're kind of still like stuck in this energy a little bit, okay? Um, and you want to come forward. You feel like you want to come forward, but you're still kind of in this energy of, how could I even do that when I rejected this person so much in the past? How, are they, how do I know if I come forward, they're not going to throw the same thing in my face that I threw in their face? And that's why I want to turn this around. <laughs> that's why I want to turn this around. I want to turn the Four of Cups and the Three of Swords in reverse, and I want to turn the Emperor upright because we do in fact have the Ten of Swords at the bottom of the deck which is saying that the worst is behind you, okay? Now, I am hearing the worst is not over yet, not quite yet, because there is still, only because, there is still some communication that needs to happen between the counterparts, the emperor and the empress, okay? But the other reason why I, ooh, the other reason why I want to turn this around is because what we have here, originally what we were talking about was the, the magician in reverse, the two of swords in reverse. There is some sense of control that needs to be relinquished. Now, we could turn this back around and have the emperor in reverse again with the three of swords and the four of cups because the emperor in reverse could represent releasing that extreme sense of control in order to do what needs to be done to handle these energies or to make these energies right. Three of swords, I'm sorry, three of swords, four of cups, yes? 
I want to get more on this. I want to pull again, but I want to clarify. This time I want to clarify the Empress energy because I want to give, I guess we'll give the Divine Masculine here or this Emperor energy. I want to give you some reassurance. I want to pull forward. So there's something that you need to know right now, I feel, about this Empress, or, may, or at least maybe there's something the Empress wants you to know. Okay, hold on. Let me get some coffee here. I really, but before I say, before I go any further, I do want to say there's a strong message coming through that there is a level of, or there is a, a lesson in control or release, relinquishing control in certain aspects, in certain ways, is being learned here, or has been learned, or you're on the precipice of learning it somehow, some way. Okay, okay. Let's clarify this Empress energy a little bit more. What does this Empress want to say? Gosh, you know, oh boy. <laughs> oh, oh, honey. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Queen of Swords is at the bottom of the deck. All right, look, you are going to have to deal with this Queen of Swords energy, masculine, okay? But but please keep in mind that the Queen of Swords can be your friend. She absolutely can be your friend. She absolutely, she is a, she definitely is, she is a great ally to have. And you know, part of part of what's coming through with this Queen of Swords energy for the masculines out there that are that are really struggling with facing this Queen of Swords. Okay, number one, all right, your ego is kind of flaring, and it's like you don't want to, you don't even want to step to her, you don't even want to even acknowledge her, let alone have a conversation with her, because you know there's a possibility that she could have some real choice words for you. She could literally before you even before you even get before you can even finish saying hello to her, she'll chop your head off, or at least you're afraid she'll chop your head off. And that's not really the case. That's not what I'm feeling here with this Queen of Swords. This Queen of Swords is very stern, she's very strong. She's standing her ground, she's standing her position, and she's not about to let anybody fuck with her. She is not taking anybody's shit, okay? But if you, how do I put this into words? But if you were to show up and just be honest, be truthful, be authentic. You don't have to have the perfect words, okay? You might slip up, you might make a mistake, you might say something that wasn't ideal, but if you have genuine, true energy of just wanting to be honest, wanting to be authentic, wanting to be faithful, wanting to just come forward and lay down the sword and just and, and be who you truly are, this queen is not going to chop your head off. This queen of swords is your strongest ally. She wants to be on your side, but she is not going to put up with your shit. That's all. She doesn't want to hurt you. She doesn't want to cut you out, but she also doesn't want to get hurt either. The Queen of Swords represents an individual that has been hurt. A lot of the time she can represent a divorcee, just like me. So I stand, I'm divorced. I was in a relationship for nine and a half years with a soulmate, I guess you could say, more, more, more so a, a karmic partner is really what it was, truly was. But, but I learned so much between the relationships I had before him and that relationship I had with him. I'm at a point now where if anybody is coming at me with mess, I ain't got time for it. I'm not putting up with it, period. I don't care who you are. You, you, you damn right I'm not going to take any mess from my twin flame either because I know, because I know he's capable of more. I know you're capable of more. So no, I'm not going to put up with your bullshit. I love you. And I love everything about you. Even when you're being super dramatic, just like I get. But I'm not going to put up with shit. I'm not even going to put up with shit for myself. That doesn't mean I don't love you. That doesn't mean that they don't love you. This Queen of Swords is your greatest ally. She will defend you for the rest of eternity. But she wants you to, to, to view yourself and hold yourself to the same standards that she views you and she views and holds herself to. 
That's why you're so that, but there's, and, and that's why there's so much fear or apprehension around this individual, but there is nothing to be afraid of, right? So, okay, that's a lot of what's keeping you at bay. But looky here, look at what the Empress is saying to you, masculine. She wants to take a leap of faith with you. You see, this fool energy came out and it fell right on top of the Emperor. We have the Magician, the Queen of Wands, the Hierophant, and the Four of Swords. So, what she is saying here is the Empress is manifesting a commitment. She's sitting in her power, Queen of Wands, knowing exactly what it is that she wants, knowing exactly what it is she's worthy of. And she's manifesting it. She's manifesting a commitment, the Hierophant. She's manifesting a marriage. Doesn't have to necessarily be a marriage, but it's a commitment nonetheless. Four of Swords. Patiently waiting. Doing her best to keep herself steady, calm, secure, grounded. But she wants this with you, masculine. She just wants you to show up for it. So what we're going to do here, my dear masculines, is we're going to take this three of swords, four of cups energy with you in reverse, and we're going to flip it and we're going to put you upright with the three of cups, I'm sorry, the three of swords and the four of cups in reverse behind you. So whereas maybe before it was blocking your way, oh wait. Oh, wait, that doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Wait, wait, how is this going to work? How is this? How, there it is. So maybe in the past where it was blocking your way, now we're going to flip it. So now the past is behind you and you're standing str strong, you're standing firm, you're standing in your power and you're getting ready to take that leap of faith. And I, what I was saying earlier, but, but I cut myself off, was that song that came in that, that I woke up with this morning, Where Are You Now? <laughs> where, where are you now, now that I'm ready to, ready to love you the way you love me, babe? <laughs> that song is so perfect. It's perfect for what's coming through here. So masculines out there that are watching this, that are listening to this, honey, honey, come on. She loves you. <laughs> she loves you, okay? And the reason why she has been in this queen of swords energy is because she is tired of putting up with your bullshit, but not only just your bullshit, masculines, the bullshit that any sort of masculine entity has been putting forward as truth to hide from the fact of doing, getting down to what's truly truthful. Putting forward the, 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 the facades, the masks, the bullshit. No, be real with me because I'm in love with the real you not this facade, not this person the patriarchy has made you to be. I'm in love with the real you, and I will not accept anything less than the real you. If you can't be the real you, then I don't want you around me. Because that is not the person, that is not the emperor that I fell in love with. Fuck fell in love with. That is not the emperor that I've been in love with since the dawning of time. So until you can bring that emperor forward, I don't want anything to do with you. And it's not because I don't love you. It's because I love you so much and I respect you so much to not accept anything less than I know who you truly are meant to be. That is what this Queen of Swords, that is why the Empress is sitting here in this Queen of Swords energy because she knows her worth. Now it's time for you to know yours. And she's gonna sit here and manifest this from you, Queen of Wands. In the magician, she's going to manifest this out of you. 
She's going to pull this out of you. Even if it breaks her heart every single day because she's not with you. She is not going to stand down because she loves you more than life itself. And she only wants the best of you and for you. Yowza. Okay. Now I'm going to get the closing. Look, we're going to move to the final closing message, messages here. But I want to do it in the form of, give me a second. I want to organize this. I want to organize this so that we know what the deal is. Um, and let's do this, 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 and that. Nope, nope, other way. This and that. Okay, well, you, I did all that organizing. Y'all can't even see it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's fine. We're going to talk about the fool. I'm going to get the close, final closing message about the fool here. So this is going to be a spirit's guidance in terms of the fool energy. And then we're going to get our oracle message. I feel like the oracle message is going to come from the dragons today. Mm. All right. <laughs> I just sounded like a Skeksis. Is that how you say it? Is that Skeksis is from... Um, the Dark Crystal, mm, that one, <laughs> I don't remember that character's name. I started watching that series and then I got bored with it. Maybe I should go back into it. Anyway, let's talk about this fool energy. And already spirits coming through with um, advice for the divine masculine here in terms of taking a leap of faith. Now look, first of all, some of you are asking, why do some of you masculines are out there have been asking, why is it I have to do this? Like, why do I have to take the leap of faith right now? Why do I have to send the message? Why do I have to reach out? Why do I have to say something? First of all, because the feminine did that already and it blew up in her face. And in many cases, masculine, you have taken such extreme steps to, to cut the feminine out of your life, to keep her away from you, like, like told her to fuck off, told her not to speak to you anymore, um, told her you didn't love her, told her you not wanted nothing to do with her, blocked her, whatnot, whatever. It's come to a point where now, masculine, if you want this individual in your life, then you need to let them know. You need to say to them, hey, look, let's. I know all of this happened. I want you to know, I want you here. Can we make this happen? Can we make this right? Can we, can we do this? The feminine is not going to invade your space. And that's not coming from a place of pride and ego, although it may be a little bit of it, but it's really coming from a place of, she loves you unconditionally enough to not cross your boundaries. Especially when she may have, most likely, not may have, most likely did that in some pretty shitty ways in the past, right? Well, she's learned her lesson. She's not gonna do that again. She would love to speak to you. She would love to interact with you. She would love to follow you on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. She would love to, in she would love that. But she is not going to invade your space, especially if you've made some really hard boundaries. And I'm not saying, no one is saying that you're wrong for that. You had every right to do that in the moment. You were, you were, go you were playing the role that you, you needed to play just like she was. But now if this is going to be made right, Whomever has laid down those boundaries needs to be the one to say, hey, I'm taking this wall down. Let's start over. That's why. It's not punishment. All right. I'm going to give this one more shuffle. Okay, cool. Let's get this closing, final closing message here in terms of the fool energies mainly for the Divine Masculine, but this could be for anyone that resonates with it. Okay, here we go. Closing message, please, Spirit. Closing message, please, Spirit, in terms of the Fool. Ooh. Honestly, I think the Ace of Cups just, oh shit, the Ace of Cups just flashed me. All right. I'm going to leave it there. We have 
so I, I really do feel like the Ace of Cups flashed me while I was doing this, um, while I was pulling this shuffle. So that was, it didn't come out officially, but it's, it's almost like it's kind of being hidden. But looky here, this is what Spirit has to say about it. You have the King of Cups, <laughs> the King of Cups in reverse with Temperance, and the Page of Swords. So Spirit is, now if, if this were, it, this couldn't, I mean, if this were, if there were a message out there in which, if there were a moment where, you know, the Page of Swords represented someone having a watchful eye on someone else, someone watching, come on, focus, then this would be that combo. This would be it. Why aren't you focusing? Damn it. Come on. Anyway, the masculine is sitting here in his King of Cups energy. Waiting, I guess, waiting for the right time to strike. Going through his own process of, of balancing, of integrating and healing while watching you, potentially. Mm. Wow. In some cases, what, okay, and what I'm getting with justice is here that for some of you, the masculine, all the masculine can do is sit back and just watch you flourish because the scales are being balanced. This is karma. This is karma. For some of the masculines out there, this is in fact karma. You are destined to sit back and just watch your feminine rise and thrive, at least for the time being. Some of you cannot reach out right now, is what I'm hearing, for good reason. For some of you, your feminine is in a relationship with someone else, in a committed relationship. Not all of you, that's for a very, that's for a very select few of you. But that's not, again, that's not for everyone. And I don't want masculines out there, I don't want you to freak out. I feel like, yes, you would know, you would know, spirit would tell you. Either spirit would tell you or you would you would know if this person is in a relationship with someone else or not. For others of you, the karma is you going through this integration and balancing process of getting into some sort of emotional uh, maturity. And all you can do is sit back and watch and watch your feminine and wait until you until there is the right time to strike. Maybe until you have the emotional confidence, maybe until you have the emotional maturity to step up, to be able to step up to this Queen of Swords and really like put your best foot forward. I do want to, I do want to say, I want to get a little bit more, but I do want to say before I pull again, that justice is not sitting here as a barrier between the two of you forever. This is just until the scales are adequately balanced because we do have another energy of balance happening here with temperance okay and it's reversed yes but it's reversed i feel like it's reversed because it's a it's a it's a it's a ongoing process it's a process it's it's a ha it's a it's happening right now there's a process of balancing integrating that's happening right now i want to get oh shoot look at there's the ace of wands underneath justice. Okay. I am going to get one more pull, but this Ace of Wands is definitely saying that you have this inspiration here, right? And that's what I was getting with the, was it the Magician? Yeah, with the Magician in the original deck. You have this Ace of Wands. So because you have this balance, this Ace of Wands here, now justice is, be, is standing in your way saying, okay, before you can take this action, there are some things that need to be balanced out first. And right now that has a lot to do with your emotional maturity. I'm going to get one more pull on this. Four of Swords. King of Swords. There you go. There you go, buddy. That's enough. Oh, fuck yes. Finally with the star. And I was hoping the star was going to come out at some point. I was hoping so, because the star represents faith. It represents having faith in the universe. It, representing, it represents... 
taking that leap of faith and moving forward even though you don't have all the answers, you don't know where something is going to lead you, you don't know how something is going to turn out. Taking that leap of faith, and there you go, four, the four of swords to the king of swords. The king of swords to your queen of swords. So the four of swords here, sorry, this is a long reading, you guys. I haven't even gotten to the oracle message, but the four of swords is representing the masculine going through a period of, you know, being in his, in his own corner, dealing with the emotions, hello, dealing with the emotions and getting clear, seeing things for what they truly are, being objective. Okay. What I really want to say with this King of Swords and Four of Swords is like, maybe to the feminines out there, just wait for it. Just wait for it, because your masculine is coming. He's coming around. He's coming to the surface. Stand in your integrity. Do not back down. Because you're literally pulling him up out of the water, out of the murkiness, out of the illusion, out of the confusion. Okay. All right. 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 Let's close this out because we're already an hour in, an hour and one minute in. Okay. So let's see. Let's get our oracle guidance. And yes, this is coming. Our oracle guidance is coming from the, from, I want to say the, not the dinosaurs, the dragons. What is going on with me today? <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Look, I don't, I just have a strong urge to just say this. And maybe this is coming from the empress within me, the divine feminine in me, but there is just like, there, I just have this strong, strong need to tell the masculines out there, the only reason your feminine is, oh God, okay, okay, yeah. The only reason your feminine is sitting in this queen of swords energy right now is because she loves you more than anything else in this world and she wants you to be the truest version of yourself that you're meant to be she loves you so much and I, i'm i'm you're probably going to get sick of hearing this but she loves you so much that she is not willing to allow you to stoop down to these lower vibrational energies and compromise yourself, compromise the beauty of your being in who in, in who you truly are she will not accept that from you she loves you too much to accept that from you. Any other feminine, whether it's a man or it's a woman in a feminine energy, any other feminine that will allow you to be something less than who you are, to, to wear a mask, to play this patriarchal game, to, 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 just, to just be in this toxic masculine energy, any woman or feminine energy that allows you to do that is not your divine feminine and is not of the caliber that you are truly destined for. The only reason this situation between the two of you is so hard is because the universe has set this up, your higher self has set this up for you to learn the lesson to be exactly, exactly who you are, regardless of the circumstances. King of Swords. I know spirit i'm getting that i'm getting this tingly feeling in my back that's like i'm doing something that i shouldn't be doing or i need to like change something but I, and i i know i'm 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 going way over we're already an hour but i just i need i need to get that message out there to the masculines that are listening this is not meant to be punishment we just want you to be who you truly are not who patriarchal society has made you into, not the mask that you have been forced to wear so that you can survive. Those days are over. It is time for you to learn to survive as who you truly are. And if that means that people, circumstances, jobs, possessions, whatnot, whatever, friends fall out of your life, then so be it. Because they were not feeding into your authenticity. They were feeding into your falseness. Closing message.
Sunshine Yellow Dragon. Wow. Helps you to help animals. Serve animals, heal, respect, and understand them. That is a really interesting message. This came out a while ago, and I wasn't kind of quite I wasn't quite sure as to, to what it really what it really meant, but now I kind of really get it because this talks about loving all animals unconditionally as they truly are which also translates into yourself. This is exactly, exactly what I've been talking about throughout this whole reading because the feminine just wants you to be, to honor the person that you truly are, the person that you were meant to be, not who patriarchal society has made you out into being. And so the message of this card is to love and respect and to serve and understand animals as they truly are. Think about it, guys. We are animals. Human beings, we're animals. We are the only species of animals that works to conform, that works through means of conformity, that tries to get everyone to fit into the same cookie cutter mold. The only species that does that. There are there are reports. I don't even think I want to read the message of uh maybe I will. There are reports that are happening that, that that are coming from Australia right now. Wombats are not only sharing their dens for small animals to keep them out of the fire, but it's like they're exhibiting behaviors of hurting, hurting, collecting other animals, other species, other small animals collecting them going out finding them and shuttling them back into their into their dens so that they don't get hurt but what do humans do we segregate we discriminate we judge we label instead of working together we work against each other the message in this card is take a lesson from the animals they respect each other. Sure, there's a chain. There, there, there's, there's a circle of life when you know there's some. Some of them are carnivores. Some of them's got to eat, but they don't take any more than what they need. They don't go out killing for the most part. They don't killing out. They don't, they don't go out hunting for sport. Sure, they find some. There are a lot of species that find sport in it, but they still eat them. They don't kill something and then just toss it aside like, huh, that was fun, next, no. Love yourself for who you are. Understand yourself for who you are. I am gonna read from the book. This is such a long reading and it's so funny because I wanted this to not be a long reading because I got a late start anyway, but. <sighs> So much for that. Okay, um, Sunshine Yellow Dragon is in fact a fifth dimensional dragon. And if we're talking, if we're talking twin flames and counterparts, this is a fifth dimensional relationship, a relationship rooted in unconditional love. Okay. Sunshine Yellow Yellow Dragon. We share our planet with a great variety of creatures who are all on a soul journey, just as we are. Like us, animals come from a myriad of star systems and planets. They all incarnate on Earth to experience, learn, teach, and serve. Our task as humans is to cooperate with, look after, and learn from the animal kingdom. Learn from the animal kingdom. Oh, oh okay. Fifth dimensional sunshine yellow dragons work with Archangel Feliel. 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 There it is. Feliel. The, <laughs> the angel of animals. They send bursts of yellow, of sunny yellow light into the auras of those of us who love and honor animals and help us to assist and heal all creatures. They are currently working assiduously to touch the hearts of those who need to understand how to treat animals with respect. They also bathe animals in their sunshine yellow light to soothe and heal them so that they can fulfill their soul destiny. Dur no, drawing this card invites you to open your aura and allow sunshine yellow dragons to pour light into you, containing the keys and codes to understand, at a profound level, all creatures on this planet. 
They send these dragons to all humans who need to change their relationship with animals, i.e. change their relationship with themselves and others. See the minds and hearts of these people blazing gloriously yellow as they expand their perspective and see animals or ourselves for who they or we truly are. It is also important to visualize all the animals in the world being touched by sunshine yellow dragons and lighting up with hope. Be, in sunshine yellow, be a sunshine yellow bridge of light along with these dragons can, help, can travel to help animals everywhere. I'm sorry, be a sunshine yellow bridge of light along which these dragons can travel to help animals everywhere. You will accrue good karma as you assist your fellow creatures. Also, I wanna say, extend, please extend some prayers to Australia and for the animals that are still alive, hopefully they can survive, for the people that are still there, especially our dear friend, Emily of, um, of uh, Indigo Moons Healing. She lives out in Australia. My prayers go out to all of you and them. But with that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye.